So I'm not going to lie, boys. When I heard about overclocking controllers, I thought I was getting trolled. I thought it was an absolute joke. Yeah, man. So she's got a Core i7 overclocked to 5 gigs. She's water-cooled, of course. 16 gigs of RAM on reverse timing. SCLI GPUs on a jank John motherboard. I mean, tip to tit, she's custom and ready for action, bro. However, the only joke is how much input delay or lag is introduced to a controller when you plug it into a PC. I'm going to show you guys how to get set up quick, easy, and free. Show you guys this mod working on a PlayStation 4 controller, Xbox One, PlayStation 5 DualSense, as well as a Switch paddle pro style controller and then i'm also going to give you guys a couple of workarounds in case you run into any issues and these are things that i wish were mentioned in some of the other tutorials out there on youtube let's get it Alrighty guys, so what is overclocking controllers? It's basically updating the drivers that Windows 10 uses in order to communicate with your controller so you reduce your input lag from about 10 milliseconds, which is still relatively quick, down to one millisecond, which is almost real time or lag free. So why exactly would you want to overclock a controller? Well, a controller is the default input means for a console, a PlayStation 4, 5, Xbox One, Series, or Nintendo Switch. As we're a Windows 10 PC or Mac, if you're one of the six people that games on a Mac, the default input device for those is going to be a keyboard and mouse. So there is no need to overclock because drivers are already optimized for the lowest possible input delay, delag, delag, delay plus lag. It's called delag. It's a new thing, boys. <laughs> But when you plug a controller into the front or back of your tower, as many gamers do, for example, look at Nick Merckx, he's on PC, but he prefers to play with a controller. Nothing wrong with it. It's a personal preference thing. However, it introduces lag or delay that isn't initially there on the console. Now, in practice, consoles also have a small amount of input delay or lag. However, when you plug it into a Windows 10 PC, then that effect is basically stacked, increasing it up to 10, 15, or even 20 milliseconds of delay, which is quite noticeable. And in my opinion, more importantly than just being more responsive uh, in peak situations and certain scenes or scenarios, it actually increased consistency to where there's very, very little variation or deviation between the fastest millisecond delay and the lowest. So it's a lot more consistent across the board. So enough jaw jacking and lip smack. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen over here. So what you are going to do is go to this website right here. This will be linked in the description below. I have tested it myself. I have installed it on my PC and I have also scanned it with two antivirus and slash anti malware programs and it comes up completely clean. So from here, you're going to click on this link here, not the FN, but the F zip file. And you are going to click on download right here. Now, I saved it to the desktop, which I recommend you do so it is easy to find. And then from the desktop, it's going to be a zip file. You are going to right click, extract all, and basically just extract it right to the desktop. It will automatically make a folder, as you can see right here. Now, you are going to go into this folder that says driver, and you are going to run the setup.exe. Now, I would recommend right clicking on it and running it as an administrator. This will make sure that there are no compatibility issues and that it does indeed give you all the full administrator accesses that you need. Now, no devices are recognized here. We're going to click on this drop down here and you are going to select all. Now, when you plug in a controller, as we are going to go one by one, and I'm going to plug in all those controllers that you saw during the intro to show you that they do uh, indeed work and show you guys how to activate this um, mod, I guess you could call it. Now, in order to make this window easier to read, you can full screen it if you want. And also, I do recommend pulling over the child's names. I don't know why they don't just call it device name, but the, we all have children now. The child's names over here. Hopefully you guys are all caught up on your child support payments and whatnot. So so generic controllers, which like I said, includes PlayStation 4 uh, DualShock 4 controllers will be shown as audio endpoint, audio endpoint, headset, microphone, blah, 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 wireless controller. Basically, the keywords you're going to look for is wireless controller, HID compliant game controller. Now, what you are going to do, you are going to click on that device and you are going to hit install service. When you do this the first time, this will be at default and this box that says filter on device will be unchecked. You will click install service. Then you will come over here, select 1000. This will still be unchecked. Click install service again, then click this box for filter on device then press install service a third and final time. So one little workaround that I wish was mentioned in other YouTube tutorials uh, showcasing this, this mod here, and I didn't see it anywhere else. I had to dig through some forums to actually find this information. So I was having an issue where it let me select 1000, install the service, but as soon as I clicked this box for filter on device, it would pop up with a window saying this device might become unusable if you do this. And then when I selected yes and pushed through the update, it would go completely red 
uh, for the device and it just would not recognize the device. It was basically unusable. So the way to get around this is basically uh, rest restart your PC and press either F4 or F2 generally to get into your BIOS menu on your motherboard. For an Alienware PC, if you have an Alienware laptop or desktop, like an R11, you're gonna press F2, just spam it a bunch and it's gonna pop open the BIOS menu and then you are gonna turn off safe boot. Uh, for a or Alienware slash Dell PC that is in security tab, and then you are gonna go to startup, and then there's a drop down box. You're gonna disable. You're gonna disable secure boot on an MSI motherboard. The majority of them, it's going to be F4. So on my my custom built PC that I just sold recently, it was F4 to get into the BIOS menu, and then from there you are gonna go to boot options in the BIOS menu, and you are going to deactivate secure boot, and that immediately fixed this problem. And I was a little worried. I was like, hmm, should I leave that on? That sounds kind of sketchy. Secure boot sounds important. I've done a ton of research on it and it seems it does no damage to have that off. So that's the workaround there. Also, like I did mention, you want to run this as an administrator. You do want to make sure that you unzip this folder. Do not try and run the program zipped as that can cause issues. And also you do want to make sure if it is a controller that does have driver updates, for example, like the PS5 DualSense 5 controller. Whenever you plug in a, whenever you turn on a DualSense 5 controller on the PS5, it'll pop up and tell you, there's a firmware update available. Same thing on the Xbox One. You want to make sure that you have the latest software installed for the controller before you want to before you do this, because when you go to install that next update or firmware patch, it'll basically undo this and you'll have to redo it. Then you are going to unplug your controller and plug it back in. And now you will see that your controller automatically will default when plugged in to being filtered. Yes, at a polling rate or refresh rate communicating with your PC 1000 times in a uh, one millisecond BL interval, which is basically your milliseconds of del delay or lag. I keep wanting to say delay. It's a new thing I've spoken into in existence. So from now on, delay slash lag, you got a weak old janky mouse from your family's porn computer in the basement. It's got a lot of delay on that bad boy. So we now know that this Hex Gaming PS4 controller over here works just fine. By the way, thank you Hex Gaming for sending this out. That will be linked down there in the description below. But how about this big one paddle controller for the Switch? Also, thank you guys for saying this out. Go ahead and plug that bad boy in. That's got to be one of the coolest things about having a YouTube channel is getting sent free shit. All right, so this is popping up as an Xbox 360 controller for Windows. And as you can see, yes, it's being filtered, thousand polling rate and one millisecond of delay or lag or delag as we like to say around here. Next up, we're going to plug in this Cyberpunk 2077 edition uh, Xbox One controller. One of my favorites for my collection to be 110% honest. I don't play with it too much because I'm trying to keep her in mint condition. I do still have the original box and everything because I feel like this controller being the last limited edition colorway or theme that is going to be offered on the Xbox One as all the new controllers are going to be the Xbox Series S and X style like this. This controller in about five to six years will have tremendous value, calling it now. So bam, this one is showing up as Xbox One controller, X input compatible device. Yes, 1001, no delag on that bad boy. All right, plugging into the USB-C port in the front of my PC and then plugging into the USB-C port on the top of the DualSense 5 over here, which by the way, we did customize on this channel. She's a real McBanger, a little holiday extravaganza, or as I like to call this one, my sack of goodies. Sure enough, it's gonna show up as a wireless controller, HID compliant game controller. And as you can see, those are in effect there as well. So how did this actually work? What were my results gaming with this? Now, first of all, I will say right off the bat, that generally I play console games with a controller and I play PC games with a keyboard and mouse. I recently, well, I guess depending on how you want to look at the word recently, I would say about three years ago, I made the transition when playing competitive first person shooters to play them on PC and get used to keyboard and mouse as I was somebody that had been born and raised as a console player. And once you get proficient and you get used to keyboard and mouse, you literally feel like you have some kind of a performance handicap and it is incredibly incredibly less responsive to aim with three quarters of an inch with your right thumb versus about six to eight inches of controllability with your wrist, elbow, and entire arm with a mouse. But I will say the main thing I noticed was one, the consistency that I consistently felt more accurate. The second one would be it almost seemed more sensitive to where I had to bump down my aiming sensitivity a little bit just because there was my, my, my inputs seemed instantaneous, which is weird because you don't really notice that there was input lag or delay before, but once you do this modification or run this script, if you will, 
um, you do notice how much quicker your inputs are. It's, calm, it's almost like when you reduce your dead zone. So as soon as you go off center and start aiming, there's, you know, it's not like it starts registering right there or anything. It's like as soon as you start turning the stick, it's instantaneously registering your movements. That's kind of the um, the sensation that you get here. It's not going to make you the next shroud. You're not all of a sudden going to be TFU. You're not going to be getting a call from FaZe Clan. Like, hey, did you just did you just mod your controller? Yeah, pl jo join our squad, please. Yeah, hi, is this Billy Bond Bronson? Hey, I heard you just unlocked your controller on Windows 10, so you're officially ready to fuck with the big boys. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. $200,000 signing deal. Yep. Mm -hmm. to your contract for something that only takes about five minutes to install is free and very easy. Um, I noticed the difference and I'm surprised that I haven't done this earlier. I guess just somebody that, like I said, plays controller on console and mouse and keyboard on PC. This never really became an issue for me, but it is nice to know that if I ever do plug in a controller to the front of my tower to play like that, I'll be playing the lag free, baby. That's going to do it. If you enjoyed this video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people so this tutorial can reach and assist them as well, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate, guys. Subscribe for more content like this. I do a ton of tutorials just like this bad boy here, as well as a lot of news in the gaming community and industry. I'll see you stallions in the next video. Peace.